Hi. Good afternoon. I'm Mark Hillebrand. I'm Head of Professional Services for Apparition. And I'll be presenting on Serious Business Gaming, The Future of Work. So if you're here, if you're a gamer and you're here and you want to build some kick-ass zombie game for BHP or Telstra, you're in the wrong place. If you want to take that skill and knowledge and actually uh, bring that into the enterprise place and help us sort of get to the, to the uh, new immersive world where we want to, you're, you're in the right place. So this presentation is going to be broken into two halves. I'll cover the first bit and really, so I guess, set the scene for, for a business uh, or an enterprise environment. So I'm going to use business and enterprise interchangeably there, but typically we're looking at larger enterprise organisations that uh, have the issues of security, um, things like that. We also will talk a little bit about, I guess, business in a gaming context, because as I said, this isn't kick-ass zombie games. This is sort of immersive learning, um, collaborative environments. And uh, I'll then hand over to, uh, to Simon, you'll meet him shortly, um, who's one of our architects. And he'll share with you in detail, I guess, some of the learnings um, and, and some of the tools we've built along the way to help us through that enterprise space. Just come out of a, um, an enterprise session or an industry session, it was interesting to hear the other people around the room you know, asked what was good about Unity, you know, what were some of the challenges, and you know, there were some common threads around there that uh, we you know, have some serious challenges in getting the enterprise space into this new immersive world that we're looking for and it wants to get to. So hopefully that'll all become a little bit clearer as we get through, and uh, so we'll keep the, I guess, the theory as minimal as possible and really make sure we can get, get into a bit of a demo and show you some of those tools and, and that learning. So, uh, I guess the key point of this is just to really, I guess for those that might, might be doubters, and I'm hopefully there's not too many here, just how big the um, immersive space is going to be um, and how much that will be in the enterprise space. So a lot of words and a lot of things on that screen, but a lot of players here in the enterprise space, and it's sort of in the consulting area, research, software services. Um, but the, I guess the key points I want to draw your attention to is probably on the right-hand side, top left there, just, just how big this industry is going to be or expected to be. So $80 billion by 2025, of which 40% will be the VR and AR space. Um, and that'll be driven by enterprise and public sector. And the AR enterprise sector, you know, in just from a couple of years ago, 515 million up to uh, 5.7 billion. So massive, massive growth and a massive opportunity for people with skills such as yours. So we are on this cusp of this major technology evolution. Um, enterprises need a helping hand to enable that change and to guide them on the journey. And that's why we're really, I guess, here today just to share that, um, share where we see the market is um, we see a real void in uh, people with gaming and uh, those sorts of skills in the enterprise space. Um, but it's not going to be an easy journey. So let's just put business um, or gaming in a business context in, in place. So the majority of workers out there at the moment, um, they've grown up with games. So gaming's not new to them. Um, you know, 70s and 80s, we had the Space Invaders and Pac-Man, that was my generation. Um, and then, you know, more recently, you've been lucky enough to have, you know, World of Warcraft, Pokemon Go, which we've also enjoyed as well. So we know gaming and we've experienced that gaming environment, yet we go to work and, you know, we've got PowerPoint, you know. So uh, I guess, you know, we're looking forward to the future when we've got a much more immersive, engaging environment. Gaming does that, the structure of gaming missions, your quests, your rewards, they're all things that we're trying to get in place in businesses. You know, we retrofit them in different areas, but we haven't got them in a holistic sense, which I think a gaming collaborative environment might be able to do. Gaming typically is always intuitive and it's engaging. And we've now got these multi-complex, uh, a complex multiplayer environments, which is, you know, for all intents and purposes, that's what we do in the workplace. We collaborate, we work. So enterprises talk about this gamification, but we're a long, long way to go. So the future of work we see is really about serious business gaming. The disruptive technologies uh, are reshaping the workplace. AR in particular, backed with AI. Um, and then the decades of, I guess, game 
design, um, modes of collaboration, learning will help that get there. So what I want to just show you here is a little bit of work we've just done recently with the research team at, uh, at Swinburne Uni um, to just show what we think might be a sort of game, um, you know, a business type game. So if I can get this to play. I've turned the sound down. We'll be making some announcements about that tool, but what we did was we worked with Swinburne and we, we've been building tools so that we can create these collaborative environments where people can work together in an AR space. And then we've taken those tools and they'll be in, we put them into our platform so that we can roll them out to other clients. So that's what I guess we're looking at when we say, you know, enterprise gaming. It's those sorts of things where we can interact, collaborate. You know, obviously you've all seen the, uh, um, you know, the JLL videos where, you know, wake up in the morning at Google and Siri, Siri telling you directions and things like that. So this is just, I guess, in the workplace where we can collaborate and share and engage. But unfortunately, it's um, enterprise, it's much harder to get change um, happening. So what I want to do is just share with you a couple of slides here in terms of what happens in an enterprise environment. And, you know, apologies for those who, who understand enterprise. This is more for, I guess, the gamers who have you know, had the, the luxury of building a game for a, for a game company. But if we're going to try to do that sort of thing in a business environment, we need, really need to understand why uh, companies make the decisions they do. Uh, we don't do things just to build a game. Uh, that'd be nice, but uh, unfortunately we do things either to make money to reduce our costs or to meet some compliance uh, area. And typically the compliance is the one that makes the biggest change because we have to do it. Um, but typically therefore it's to make money or to, uh, to reduce our costs. So we go out and we ideate and we, uh, we look at challenges and we prioritise those sorts of things and look at what things can, I guess, achieve those areas for us to give us some sort of competitive advantage. We do rapid prototyping, and you would have heard a lot about POX and the whole of the industry is talking about doing POX and rapid POX around AR, VR uh, and immersive technology. And that's really, I guess, where the industry is right at the moment. But and we build lots of them at Apparition, um, and lots of them traditionally over the last five years don't go anywhere because while we built these POX, they didn't have solid business cases because the innovators just thought, I need to get into AR or VR and do something. But I'll talk a little bit more about that. But then once you've got these POX, and e sorry, even with these POX, you need ways of simulating a real world environment with data feeds uh, and information like that, changing content. Um, so just like, um, I suppose, in the early days of websites, you know, we went from that, I don't need a website, I've got a brochure. I now need a, I need a website, I have to have one. And then once you've got the website, well, how do I change that? You know, I don't want to keep going back to the developer. So those um, progresses happen in, in all sorts of areas. And then once you've moved, I guess, determined the, um, the business cases here, then it's about scalability and, and rolling out. And it's that sort of area where the businesses are having real difficulty moving from these proof of concepts to some sort of scalability and rolling it out. So at, at uh, Apparition, we've structured ourselves to try and help organisations achieve that. So in the bottom right-hand corner, we've got this thought leadership area where we work with enterprise clients, run workshops, strategic workshops, things like that. We then partner, so we're a, an uh, a Unity Centre of Excellence so that we can be part of the guests of the Unity community. Um, we then work with organisations such as Dell um, and uh, Juniper and build relationships with them, with the enterprise clients, to try and really help move that technology along and uh, show them where it's moving. We also do a lot of research with a number of different universities, like that project I showed before, to try and take concepts and ideas and then build it into tools so that we've got something valuable and use useful for business. And then so that we can reuse it, uh, we've built that into a platform. And Simon will show you a bit more about that. So this is the last slide of, of theory, but um, most of you will be familiar with the uh, Gartner hype cycle. And the, the unfortunate part at the moment is that, uh, if I can use this little pointer, that's about there where AR is at the moment. So 
We've had all the hype, everybody knows about it, but we're really struggling to get some really good user cases and, and, and experiences. That's not to say people aren't doing it, but that's the, the industry as a whole. <laughs> the interesting thing when you overlay that with you know, the, um, the adoption life cycle, this blue bit here, these were the, the innovators that we were dealing with four or five years ago. And if I look through some of the apps and the things we developed four or five years ago, and if in fact probably before then, we did some great apps that you know, looked really good, creative, but they're all on the shelves. They, they, there was no real ongoing use case for them. They looked good, but they didn't get anywhere. And that's, that's really, I guess, solved a point in time. But now that the business has moved on, so we've moved from here of people who, who want to just have these shiny, touchy things that they can play with but don't do anything in the enterprise space, that's passed on. The difficulty we've got now is we're in this early adopter area where we don't need to convince people that AR is important or VR is important. Um, what we've just got to do is help them get it to sort of some sort of adoption. The difficulty is, is, is getting over this chasm. And the challenge is that if we're starting on this side here, we never get there because we're not looking at what the business cases are. We've got to plan ourselves over here, look what business cases uh, are there, and then build the business cases to get across that chasm. So that's probably enough theory. What I'll do is I'll hand over to Simon, uh, and Simon's going to take you through what are some of, the, I guess, the learnings we learnt along the way, um, particularly at a technical uh, level, and then de hopefully, the gods be willing, um, give you a, a live demonstration of some of the applications that we've built. And then back to you. Do you want that one? Um, I'll, I'll right. stick with this. <clears throat> okay. Um, am I... Can I... Yeah, we're coming through okay. All right, thank you, Mark. Okay, so yes, um, uh, my name's Simon Galanakis. Um, I'm a platform architect at uh, Apparition. So, um, basically, just picking up where Mark left off, I I'd like to share uh, with you some important aspects in building apps um, for business. Um, I, I will explain what uh, an EMS platform is um, and how it can enable you uh, to deliver those serious business games. Um, and I yep, definitely will be showcasing a couple of use case scenarios um, as a demonstration of how an EMS platform can serve uh, two distinctly different vertical markets. Okay, so um, let me start by uh, reinforcing what Mark uh, said um, uh, from a developer's perspective. Uh, over the years, um, working on different business projects, um, there were some important challenges that we faced and we, we continue to face. Um, whilst each business was unique, they seemed to share the same problems. And this is true in particular with businesses within the same industry vertical. Um, first of all, they don't quite understand the technology, uh, be it AR or VR or, or gaming for that matter. Um, uh, they do understand that it's pretty impressive, it's, it's, it's wow, you know, it looks pretty good, but exactly what would it do for my business? And it's always constrained by time and money. So, as an effect of this, um, businesses usually want to start with a, a proof of concept, um, something that can be turned around in a very quick time, uh, it's got a relatively low cost, um, and this will minimise any impact or risk uh, of the investment. It has to demonstrate how it can work within existing processes and the existing business workflows. And more often than not, they never actually touch actual production systems. So rather, we have to provide some type of a simulated environment um, and, and uh, simulated data. Okay, so... Let's just look at the challenges that we developers face uh, when designing and building apps for businesses. So there are technical concerns that we have to keep in mind. So let's just say we are building a POC, a proof of concept, and the chances are that um, our app will need to access a simulated, um, uh, uh, simulated environment where, data is either, where the data is either mocked up or uh, there's a level of staleness in the data, so it's not live. Um, if that POC is deemed a success, then uh, we are given the go-ahead for a full-scale implementation. Um, and then those simulations will need to be replaced with actual integrations into the existing business systems. 
ERPs, CRMs, data warehouses. Um, there's a long list of systems that uh, enterprises and, and businesses use. Um, security um, must be at the forefront of any development. Um, there are many types of protocols of, uh, in terms of authentication, um, whether it be SAML or LDAP, Kerberos is a good old fashioned one, um, and some of the newer ones like OAuth 2 and uh, OpenID Connect. Uh, you know, as a developer, you hope that uh, a company has only got one authentication mechanism. You know, don't be surprised if you have to deal with more than one. So that's just the fact of working in, um, in corporates in particular. So there are different database systems, uh, whether it be Oracle, SQL Server, NoSQL document um, databases, mainframe systems. Um, th there really is a lot of different types of systems that as an app developer you need to be aware of. Um, of course, different data formats, uh, you know, the simplest ones, XML, JSON, CSV, but um, there are other file formats that um, uh, companies use. Um, you know, we're building um, immersive, uh, we're building um, um, games or apps, so they'll need uh, digital um, assets, uh, digital, whether it's images or models, um, CAD drawings, so you've got to have to access those data stores, so uh, be it um, SharePoint, um, uh, be it a simple shared network folder, so um, they're factors to consider. Um, now, it's in our experience, um, it's working in, um, in the industry for so long, that immersive and effective business apps are those which operate against near real-time data. So connectivity to IoT sources and systems that analyze data lakes, you know, Splunk or Power BI, uh, is also an important consideration when we're designing apps. Okay, what else? So um, being able to change the content on the fly is an absolute must in uh, business systems and business apps. Um, in many cases, you've got non-technical admin staff who is going to be doing those updates. So they really need simple user interfaces where they can go in, update the content so that it can be pushed down to the, um, to the, um, to the apps. Um, so in these situations, it's impractical to rebuild an app and redeploy it. So no baked in content, guys. Um, right, and uh, finally, it is an unavoidable fact that business requirements will change. And more often than not, it happens during development time too. So our apps must be pliable and adaptable to these changing needs. Yep, there's, um, there's scope management and all those processes around pro uh, building apps, but you know, more often than not, the customers win. Um, so let's also not forget um, the evolution of technology. You know, IoT, big data, AI, machine learning, the future of work, um, as Mark touched upon, um, our apps need to accommodate these factors. So to address these challenges, we went ahead and created an EMS platform. And um, let, me, let me first... Um, describe what an EMS platform is. So first of all, it's a tool to help us build rapid business apps, especially when we're doing proof of concepts. It has to be quick and has to be um, uh, delivered in um, low, low cost and, and, low and quick time. It's a centralized service on the cloud. It can also be installed on premise. It has to be modular, extendable, and hence reusable. Uh, we want it to be accessible by any platform and any device. Android, iOS, wearables, Dell Visor, HoloLens, lots of devices that we need to accommodate. Scalable and robust, that's a must. It will integrate and it will aggregate multiple sources of data within the organization. It simplifies data formats for connected clients and it understands contextual relevance. Contextual relevance is um, knowing what kind of app is connected and uh, with where, where they are in the world, what time of the day it is, what they're looking at in terms of the, are, they, are they scanning um, a scene, are they scanning a server, um, all that provides contextual information about the user so that the platform can then tailor an experience that's relevant to them. An experience might be video content or help or um, data, uh, depending on their role. 
And um, it has to enable visualization of IoT data. So a, a very important thing in enterprise business, enterprise and businesses day, these days, um, IoT features very heavily in their concerns. So there is an emerging uh, concept of um, a digital copy of the real world, one-to-one. -one. So this is a concept of a digital twin. Um, and it's starting to form a part of this concept of the industry 4.0. It's where assets and objects in the physical world have a digital equivalent, um, identical in respect to form and design, uh, but augmented with real-time analytics and information. It's all based on sensor readings from the physical device, but also information from the surrounding environment, all coming together to provide information real-time, near real-time, um, about the actual um, item in the physical world. Okay, so let's hop to it. So to demonstrate some of the concepts I've been talking about, I would like to flip over now and show you two different business scenarios um, and how each one of those can be served out of one um, EMS platform. So this is where we uh, pray to the demo gods. Um, so just quickly, and um, I'm hoping some of you have come by our, our, our booth uh, today, I'll be showing um, our virtual shopping mall and an IT ops data center. Um, <laughs> Uh, two different um, vertical markets, retail and, um, and IT ops. Um, the same platform can serve content to both of them. So let me uh, now jump over. Okay, that's popped up there. Great. So what I'm showing you at this point in time is our, um, on the right here, where's my mouse? Hello, mouse. There you are. Okay, right. So on the right side is... Um, uh, portal um, of the EMS platform, a very simple uh, web interface where I have um, got a whole bunch of um, records, um, some alarms, some tick boxes, a bit of information there. On the side here, I've got my Unity project. And, uh, I'll click and run it. There we go. Okay. Right. So it's just loading up. So at this point in time, I've got um, an instance of the EMS platform running locally on the laptop, so I'm not um, bound to any internet connectivity issues. So just a very um, simple um, example of what a potential digital um, twin of a data center might look like. Um, if we look over here, uh, we see I've got a set of, um, I've got a server rack there currently, um, you know, with a particular computer, you know, showing there. So what I'm going to demonstrate um, quite simply is um, back over to my EMS platform where I will go ahead and turn on um, an alarm um, which uh, represents, um, which what I'm doing is I'm kind of simulating um, one of these uh, machines on the rack um, having some faults. So I'm going to publish an experience uh, which effectively shows that there's an alarm. So when I go back to my, uh, to my environment and do a bit of a refresh, um, we'll see that um, that particular um, alarm has popped up on, on the rack. Um, now, this is a, an, an example of how um, something that's been built that's uh, rich in digital um, you know, a VR experience um, has received data in real time from an EMS platform. So, of course, uh, the data is local, and I've gone ahead and manually updated this, but there's no reason why there's a connected business system on the back end, a Splunk, a, an IoT data source, which is feeding information to the platform, aggregating it and pushing it down um, to, the, um, uh, to our app to show it in an immersive way. So that's uh, one, um, one example of how a particular vertical um, uh, works. Um, let me now um, quickly uh, fire up my example of our uh, retail demonstration. And in this case here, what I'll do is on um, our EMS platform, <coughs> okay, I will switch over to another tenant. So same platform, multi-tenanted architecture. Um, I was in the data center, now I'm switching over to the shopping mall. 
Okay, in my shopping mall, I've configured a whole set of shops, uh, be it a supermarket, um, an arcade, a bakery, and as soon as my um, as soon as my game loads, loading, loading, loading. There we go. All right, cool. So there's my shopping mall. Okay, so nothing, um, nothing too exciting. Um, I mean, uh, guys who build uh, virtual games, um, those those incredible zombie killing games, will probably laugh at um, at what I've uh, what I've built here. Nevertheless, it's a demonstration of capability. So um, I'm here in a jewelry shop. If I alt, um, tab over to the jewelry shop that represents. Um, um, this particular shop again. This is what we what we want to classify as a digital copy. You can see on the walls, I've got um, bracelets and um, rings, uh, which are currently published. I'm going to simply unpublish it. Okay, good. Flip over here, refresh, and that's gone and it's been replaced with a watch. So. Nothing too exciting other than just to demonstrate again um, content being updated on the fly uh, which has been managed um, from the platform. Um, again, I've done it manually but um, connecting into other data sources which will do that for us is uh, what we're talking about. Okay, so um, let me uh, just jump back now to our uh, presentation. Okay. So, um, it's up there, great. Okay, so I just wanted to recap. Um, those two demos, again, they were two distinctly different vertical industries. And, and like I said, whilst you saw one module, you know, supporting each of the verticals, those AR experience, if those who were very quick to see, um, the modular design of the platform is such that industry-specific modules can be built and plugged into the EMS platform to meet the business needs. So what I mean by modules, so let me just quickly jump back to my platform and um, just highlight that um, whilst, if I go back home, okay, when I clicked on a particular, my gold uh, shop, you saw a module which was the AR experience which effectively contained um, the images that appear in the shop. Now, as a platform, we're talking about modular. What I mean is having the ability to go in and drag in any number of modules which um, apply to my industry. Um, I can tailor and create it as I need to. Some of these are in beta modules, but the idea is that the, the platform itself is extendable. You can add features, you can, add, um, um, you can update and enhance what you need. Um, whether you're building a POC and you want to demonstrate asset management, there's an asset management module that you may have, or whether or not you need to connect into an existing asset management system in the business enterprise, then there's a module there that can, can apply that and it can do that for us. Okay, let me minimize this and go back. So, um, again, I think I just want to highlight that too was also a demonstration of what a digital copy of a physical world might look like. So, and it's also, uh, again, uh, live data, how you can augment it over um, yeah, that, digital, that digital copy. Okay, so to continue on, to build a serious business game, okay, you need a reliable foundation, right? something that you can trust, something you can reuse, something that's, um, something that's uh, robust and that can connect and deal with all those, he do the heavy lifting of talking to business systems without your app needing to worry about it. it should be designed to be extended, you know, and that sh should be through a, um, a suite of modules and which you may have already, uh, which we have already, which can handle lots of tasks and functions, but there's no reason why, as a modular system, you can extend it to uh, add more and more functionality. Fundamentally, it has to be accessible to developers. So, my thoughts are this. Let the platform handle all those complexities of integration, security, and you focus on building those beautiful games to deliver serious business capability. 
Right, so before I hand back to Mark, um, I'd like to take this uh, opportunity to quickly announce that we are working on a beta release of our Unity SDK um, for our platform. So we are seeking developers from the Unity community uh, to be part of our beta test program. Um, and if you would like to participate, please register your interest on our website. The link's up there, apparition.com slash register. And... Um, you know, we'll get in contact with you and uh, invite you to, um, to help us um, uh, push this along. Um, thank you, and over to you, Mark. Thanks, Simon. You might as well stay there, because we're about to head, in, head into some questions. So, uh, yeah, so we built this, uh, I guess, in the background uh, while we were bu building um, POX and other proof of concepts, but uh, what we found was that we were just kept reinventing the wheel, the, uh, the wheel. So the guys built this in the background, had a number of little tools, and then ultimately it just became a, uh, I guess, a larger system that uh, still got a long way to go. But we sort of, I guess, looked at what the challenges the whole industry is facing and um, what other developers are facing. We thought, look, you know, it might make sense to go out and share that. So. Uh, We'd certainly encourage you to you know, come along. There's certainly no cost um, at that level. If it uh, obviously evolves to something where you've got commercial clients, well, then we're happy to have a conversation. But if it helps you uh, solve some of the problems um, in terms of putting POCs together, in terms of rolling out for your enterprise clients, uh, we'd love to, love to talk to you.